Hello, my name is Jesse Keating. I work for Rackspace in our public cloud uh, uh, product group. My job is to automate deployments and new environments for our public cloud. <clears throat> my demo today is on doing a trial deployment of a simple web application using Ansible. Within Rackspace, when we go and automate on our internal products, we use Ansible for a lot of that automation. Ansible is an amazing orchestration tool that is very simple, very clear, but also very powerful in that it has many, many modules to do what you need to do. Because we're a great open source company, we have contributed back to the Ansible project in the form of a number of Racks modules. These modules can be used to manipulate resources within the Rackspace cloud. Within our product group, we run our cloud on a cloud, and so we make use of these modules as we do our automation. So my demo today, a live demo against my better judgment, again, is doing a cloud-style application deploy. And this, there are many different ways that you can do deployments, and in this demo we're going to do a deployment where we're treating our servers as cattle and not pets, which means that we're going to create new ones and destroy old ones and never try and do an in-place upgrade. So the scenario is that we have a very simple web application. There are three web servers, as we can see, in our control panel, and they are sitting behind a load balancer. And what we are going to do, pardon me just one second, I need to reset. Oops. Going to make sure that our 1.0 servers are behind our cloud load balancer and not our 2.0 servers, which we are going to add in a moment. Ansible works on playbooks. Playbooks are simple YAML files that contain a task list of things that we want to accomplish. And in our deployment, the first step we want to do is discover details about our load balancer. So if we look in a YAML file, what I have here is a simple declaration of a task that we're going to do. We have named this play uh, launch new, load, new nodes, because that's eventually what we're going to do here. But the first thing we're going to do is make use of the Rax CLB module. This module allows you to create, delete, or discover details about a cloud load balancer. In this case, we know the name of the cloud load balancer, V Brown Bag LB1. We know which region it belongs to. We are stating that it should be present, and we're waiting for that fact to be true. And we have credentials that we're using to do this. So Ansible will check to see if that load balancer exists, and if it does, it will just return the details to me. So we can run this and see what we get. So what we got back is details about that load balancer. And we're going to use those details a little bit later. So we've registered those details in a variable called LB. So now that we know what our load balancer is, and in particular how many nodes we have behind the load balancer, we're going to create new instances with our new image to replace those. That's our step two. So now we have a new set of tasks that go in this existing play. We are now going to make use of the RACS module, which we use for creating, destroying, or otherwise manipulating cloud server instances. We are going to name them web with an item in our web version, which is 2.0, .vbrownbag.org. Give it a certain flavor, the image we're going to use is our 2.0 image. For the sake of this demo, we are using a pre-baked image that we have validated in pre-production. This is not the only way that you could do this. If you really wanted, you can launch the instance from a, raw, from a standard image and do all of your deployment onto that after that is done. 
But for the sake of the demo time, we're going to use a pre-baked image. And again, we're going to state that it should be present, and we're going to wait for that to be true. We're going to register the output of this into a new nodes uh, variable. And then we're going to iterate on a sequence that is the number of nodes that exist behind the load balancer. After that, we have a couple of tasks that add the, the nodes into our in-memory inventory. We're going to be using data about that node as the IP address for the host name, assign it to the new nodes groups, and take that load balancer data that we have and assign it to a variable as well. And we're gonna do the same for the old nodes because we will eventually do something with those as well. So if we run our playbook now, Again, it's going to go out and gather information about that load balancer and then use that in the next steps. To save time, these instances already exist, so what we're getting back is just data about those instances rather than waiting for those instances to fully provision. Okay, that was all successful. We have those instances and we know about them. We can do move on to our next step. Our next step would be to validate that those instances are operating in the way that we want. And now we have a couple things going on. Because we have new nodes as a group, we can create a new play to operate on those new nodes. And so this is the play work on new nodes. The hosts are those new nodes that we added in this task up here. And a very, very simple validation can be a URI check. This is just gonna be a simple git request to the HTTP address of that host name. We're using an extra Ansible feature here called delegation. And what we're actually doing is while we're working on the context of a new node, we are delegating the task that's gonna operate onto my local host. So I'm using my local host to do a git request to the remote node. run that. And then we see we have three separate tests of the new nodes, one for each of those nodes, and they were all successful. So we have new nodes, we know that they're successful, now we're ready to manipulate that load balancer. But before we do that, let's make sure that what we have is the old code, and that what we'll get is new code. So here's our cool web app, version 1.0. This is our final set of steps. We've tested that new node, and the very next thing we want to do is if that node is successful, we are going to add it into the load balancer. This is going to use the RACS CLB nodes module, which allows you to manipulate the nodes that exist behind a load balancer. We tell the load balancer ID based on the load balancer value that we assigned when we created the inventory. We tell it which port it should operate on. The condition should be enabled, it's a primary. We wait for that state to be true, which is state equals present. And we again, we delegate this to our local host. So our local host is the one that's actually running this module, and it's manipulating the load balancer by way of this module. Once those are all complete, we will cycle through our old nodes and remove them from the load balancer. And this is essentially the same task, although instead of an address, we are supplying a node identification, a node ID, 
and we are saying that state should be absent. And again, we're delegating. So let's run through this. And at the end, what we should have, instead of having 1.0 as our instances behind the web balancer, load balancer, we should have 2.0. And if we look at our cool web app, we should be getting 2.0 instead of 1.0. So let's see if that happens. Again, we're discovering details about the load balancer. We're launching the new nodes. Validating that the new node is correct and adding it into our load balancer. We see a different color here now because we're actually changing the state of something. Our state has gone from the state that we wanted it be, to be in already to a change of state to meet our requirements. And that change is inserting the new systems into our load balancer. All the new ones are in, and we are in the process of removing the old ones. And if we look at our load balancer, we now see 2.0 because we have completed our task. So all the plays are done, all the things are changed, and if we visit our cool web app, we're now in version 2.0. You could add on to this. Now that your cattle, your old cattle, is no longer in the load balancer, you can destroy them if you need to, recycle them, do whatever you need. Obviously, there's a step where you can put in more validation of your, of your web application uh, there's many more things that can be done, but this is just a simple demo of a cloud application deployment using Ansible with Racks modules.